all television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. As you can see in Daniel chapter 7 verse 5, Daniel beheld another beast, the first being the lion of verse 4, which is symbolic of the Christian nations, as opposed to the bear in verse 5, which is symbolic of the non-Christian nations, the communistic especially, and as much as the bear is the Ezekiel 38 confederacy headed by Gog, which is the chief prince, chief being Rosh in the Hebrew, of Meshach and Tubal, which is Moscow and Tobolsk, according to Bullinger in his book Commentary on Revelation. Going back to way before Daniel 7, which doesn't even begin to happen until the woe of the fifth trumpet, we saw in the 1800s, after 1830, the Communist Manifesto come into being with Karl Marx being a student of Hegel who died in 1831, and it was also during the 1800s in the United States the left-right paradigm of today came into the picture. The Hegelian dialectic being basically problem, reaction, solution, and we're now at the point where the so-called left-right paradigm are the same thing, having been taken over by the Stalinists and the Trotskyites, symbolized by Ammon and Moab, which you see listed with Edom throughout the Word of God, even toward the end of Daniel chapter 11 in verse 41. The first king of the north you can read of in Daniel chapter 11 being Tsarist Russia, and as you can see in the Daniel 11 hypothesis on biblicalresearchlabs.com, verses 6 through 8 have to do with the Bolshevik revolution revolution orchestrated by the Kenites from Wall Street when the bones of the king of Edom, who was Tsar Nicholas II, were burned into lime by Moab, as you can see in Amos chapter 2 verse 1, bringing about the Soviet Union, which was the second king of the north up until the end of the Cold War when the Soviet Union became the Russian Federation, the third king of the north, and that's when what's known as the unipolar era began. Ammon and Moab being the unipolar globalists with Edom, which means means red being the multipolar, and because it's the Kenites versus the Kenites in a power struggle within their own shadow government, which is symbolized by the he-goat of Daniel chapter 8, this is nation rising against nation, which is what will break the great horn of the he-goat of Daniel chapter 8 verse 8, after which the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7 emerge at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the bear being the fourth king of the north, which is the Ezekiel 38 confederacy. So going back to the world war, Wars in the Daniel 11 hypothesis and the first two kings of the south, which were first Ephraim, which is the British Commonwealth, followed by Germany, which is Judah, and at the end of World War II, the he-goat, which is the shadow government of the Kenites, brought about the great horn of Daniel chapter 8, verse 8, which is the United Nations, 1945 also being when Manasseh, which is the United States, became the third king of the south, which you can read of, as well as the third king of the north, which is the Russian Federation in Daniel chapter 11 verses 13 through 15 and once the great horn is broken the new world order comes into being which is the one world political system including the fourth king of the south which is the lion of Daniel chapter 7 as well as Revelation 13 made up of Ephraim, Judah and Manasseh the Christian nations kingdom against kingdom is the deadly wound to the one world political system and that's when Ephraim, Judah and Manasseh will be plucked up by the roots so to speak as as you can see in Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 because that's when they'll cease to be Christian nations when they worship Satan instead of Christ which is what Antichrist means. There are the three horns because in Daniel chapter 8 we see Ephraim and Manasseh as the horns on the ram, the British Commonwealth as well as the United States with Judah as the notable horn on the he-goat, not the great horn, that's the UN which didn't come into being until after the World Wars. This is the notable horn which was Germany which was first used in World War I to bring about the League of Nations and then again in World War II to bring about the United Nations which is the great horn of the he-goat which is symbolic of the shadow government of the sons of Cain. 
We also see in Daniel chapter 7, verse 5, three ribs in the mouth of the bear, and that doesn't happen until 666 when Satan appears as the Antichrist because those three ribs are symbolic of Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh also defeated both politically as the three ribs in the mouth of the bear as well as spiritually as the three horns that are plucked up by the roots when most Christians worship the false Christ when he appears in Jerusalem in the middle of the five-month-long hour of temptation and then half an hour later, so to speak, or two and a half months at the seventh trumpet, the true Christ returns, destroying Daniel's fourth beast, which is exclusively supernatural, made up of Satan's role of Antichrist, as well as his fallen angel locust army, including those ten fallen angel kings, when both the Battle of Armageddon, as well as the Battle of Hamangog transpire when all are changed into spiritual bodies. As you can see in Daniel chapter 11, verse 41, Edom, which means red, and Moab, and the chief which is Rosh in the Hebrew of the children of Ammon shall escape out of his, meaning Jacob's hand, because remember when Jacob and Esau were born, Jacob's hand took hold on Esau's heel, as you can see in Genesis chapter 25, verse 26. So escaping out of Jacob's hand at the woe of the seventh trumpet is when the dominion is taken away from the bear. And as you can see in Genesis chapter 27, verse 40, when thou shalt have the dominion, meaning when Esau shall have the dominion, thou shalt break his yoke, the yoke of Jacob, from off thy neck. Thou shalt escape out of his hand, in other words, when the dominion is taken away from the bear as well as the lion and the leopard at the seventh trumpet. So that's really a prophecy against Esau, and as much as all flesh being destroyed at that time coincides with the destruction of the atheistic communism brought about by the Kenites through Edom, which means red via the hidden dynasty of politics. <laughs> 